name is Kevin Winters, and I want to start dealing with a new subject, y'all. I want to start dealing with uh, the subject of the mystery of authority. Uh, before I go into what I want to deal with, first of all, let me uh, thank everybody who was interested in uh, where I've been. I've not um, stopped doing videos, obviously, because I'm back. Um, I just, uh, I needed to be clear as to what God was saying about the subject that I'm going to present. And one of the things that I told God is when he stops pouring, I stop pouring. So he didn't stop pouring, but I try to do my best to make sure that I am clear on my instructions from him before I advance. And so I continue to ask him questions until I'm clear. And he knows that I won't move until I'm clear. Uh, he said to Jeremiah, he said, Jeremiah, what do you see? He said, I see a branch of an almond tree. He said, now I hasten my word to perform it, or now I am ready to perform my word. What it means is until God gives you clarity or until you can see something clear with clarity, you really shouldn't move on. It's one of the principles that God taught me regarding his voice. So when he speaks to me, I know when it's time to act on what he said, when I can see clearly what he's trying to say. And uh, in fact, you know, the Bible speaks of presumptuous prophets. That's what a presumptuous prophet is. A pres There's a difference between a false prophet and a presumptuous prophet. A false prophet goes out and says things that God didn't say. He has a revelation that's not from God, and he's saying something that God did not say. He, and so God says, I didn't speak to him. But a presumptuous prophet is a person who has heard from God, and you have a genuine revelation, but you don't really have the interpretation. And so you give an interpretation to something that God has said, and by doing so, you misconstrue what he was trying to say. And what it does is it causes confusion because you have assumed that God was saying one thing when God was really saying something else. And so I do my best not to be a presumptuous prophet. I try my best not to be the guy who has to go back later and say, ooh, that's not what God actually meant. You actually meant this. Because it creates, creates confusion, causes problems, and the word won't prosper because it's not his. And it doesn't mean that the revelation wasn't genuine, but it means that the prophet may have misapplied that revelation and for if I had to back that up, I would, uh, I would show it to you this way. Um, Jesus has, because you can have a truth that's misapplied. Jesus is told by Satan, hey, um, if you jump off this cliff, the angels of God will surely be there to take care of you. You know, he said, they'll bear you up in their hands, let you dash your foot against the stone. That's what the scripture says. Well, that is a revelation. That is truth from God. But that's not the right application of that truth. And for Jesus to respond to God's truth be in, a, in a misapplied format would may have made him presumptuous. So I try not to be presumptuous. Now, I also want to thank everybody who uh, read my books. Um, they are, uh, you know, I'm not trying to sell books. I'm trying to get messages out. And one of the reasons I write these books is because there's absolutely no way I can say everything in videos. Um, because what I give y'all is a snippet of the conversations that God has with me. Uh, one of my video series, Understanding the Way God Talks, that's 58 videos, but that's only a little bit of, or half of the stuff that he said to me. And so I can't put everything in video. It would take a year to do one series. And so I write books. Two of the books I've written, uh, you can hear the voice of God clearly. And, um... God is that you, me, or the devil. Uh, books about the voice of God. This one is about hearing God clearly. This one is about being able to discern what you hear. Because it's one thing to hear a voice, but do you know which voice is speaking to you? And that's what those books are about. And so, <clears throat> um, I encourage you to get those if you haven't. And if you've gotten it and haven't written a review, I invite you to write the review. But thank you to everybody who purchased it. Now, I want to deal with this subject of the mystery of authority. Um, I call it a mystery because God unveils authority for me in a unique way. So this has been our conversation, parts of our conversation. We've talked about a whole lot of stuff, my personal life and all kinds of stuff, writing other books. Um, because, again, I write books because there's no other way to get everything into a format that I can put into the hands of people. Um, 
And so uh, he started dealing with me about this idea of authority. And, and so what I'm going to deal with today kind of picks up from um, I did a series last year called Praying for Authority. And uh, if you haven't read or looked at those videos, I invite you to look at those videos. It's called Praying for Authority uh, or the Power of Praying for Authority. And so in there, I unveil a lot of things about authority um, that are important. And the reason it's so important is because God instructs us to actually pray for them. And uh, but we ha I have found that people don't pray for people in authority unless it's the people in authority that they agree with or that they like or that they voted for or that has their political views. What they would rather do is pray about them or talk about them, but they, they're not inclined naturally. And it's our flesh. Our flesh is not naturally inclined to pray with a, a for some for someone that we don't like. We generally pray about them. So when our wife or spouse gets on our nerves, we don't say, Lord, I pray that you would bless them and give them strength and courage and power. And I hope that they do well and that you would give them favor on their jobs. What we say is, Lord, they have hurt me. I don't like this about them. And so we start to point out to God the things about them that we don't like. Well, that's not praying for someone. That's praying about someone. Praying for means I am asking for God's favor, his goodness, his protection, his kindness, his guidance. I'm asking for good things for the lives of those who I'm praying for, not praying about. So this has helped some of you in your marriages to stop praying about your spouse and start praying for your spouse. Now, should you talk to God about your spouse? You sure should. You just talk about things that you don't like, but be prepared. Because if you can hear the voice of God, he will likely talk to you about your role. You're going to want to talk about them and he's going to want to talk about you. You're going to want to talk about him and he's going to want to talk about you. So if you get this in your spirit, this should help your marriages. This will help your relationships. This will help your friendships. This will help your, your everything. But ultimately, we're called to pray for authorities, not about them. And there is a reason for that. And part of uh, that reason is what I intend to unveil as we look at this subject of authority. I want to deal with this because it's really important. Now, the other thing that made this um, really important to deal with is uh, God gave me a dream many years ago that he's just starting to Whenever he deals with me about authority, he brings this dream back and deals with me about it, talks to me about it. In the dream, there was an angel and a principality, maybe three, four hundred feet. I don't know how big. I know they were very large because they were fighting behind our Capitol building or over the Capitol building. Um, both of them. My, our Capitol building is the legislative branch of our U.S. government. It is where our Congress sits. It's where the laws are made. And so this angel and this huge demon, uh, well, huge angel and huge demon, are fighting over this territory where the laws are made, where the authority sits. And on the lawn, there were a group of people who were protesting they had their little signs and they were picking in and doing all of that. And one thing that God began to show me is that no matter how hard they screamed and yelled and no matter what they wrote on their signs, what they did did not lend aid to the angel and it did not lend aid to the demon. So the demon was not advancing his fight through this protest. And neither was the angel empowered in his fight by the protest. And the angel nor the demon were winning. They were evenly matched in their wrestling. They went back and forth and back and forth. And nothing that they did affected them. So God began teaching me there is a way to affect them. There is a way to affect what's happening in the spiritual realm. There is a way to affect the angels 
uh, and God's agenda. And there is likewise a way to affect the agendas of principalities. Now, this is important to principalities. So important, in fact, last time I brought this up, I wouldn't tell y'all what happened because I wasn't sure everybody is quite ready for some of the experiences that I have. And in fact, I go to an evangelical church and I know for a fact people aren't ready for all of the experiences that I have. But one of the things, as God began to deal with me about how to effectively pray for authority and the effects of authority, uh, 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 he, he was talking to me and out of nowhere, I fell asleep or fell into a trance when my eyes closed on the natural realm my spiritual eyes immediately opened in the spiritual realm and i went from laying on my bed in one second a millisecond to standing in a millisecond before the most hideous being and it was some type of principality or demonic power that had pulled me into an experience his goal was to intimidate me and let me know i had better stop and that week seemed like a week from hell as they went to harassing me over this information. And that is because there is a real way to be effective in prayer. And then there's just prayer that has no impact. See, yeah, and again, prayers that have no impact are prayers about things. Prayers with impact are prayers for things. When we understand what prayer is, what it's for, and what it's about, and how to properly pray pray. Because again, I want to remind you, the Bible does not tell us that we are to pray about our authorities. We were not to pray about President Obama. We are not to pray about President Trump. We are to pray for President Trump. We were to pray for President Obama. And I wonder if we had spent as much time on our radio broadcasting programs, I would listen to radio, uh, uh, talk radio sometimes and I used to listen to it a lot and I stopped listening to it because every time I turned it on they would give people an hour to call in and voice their complaints about the president about leadership about everything and I just thought wow we have a whole hour of time that a radio Christian radio host dedicates to bad mouthing and complaining about leadership in Congress and leadership at the White House. Could he have not spent that same hour inviting the nation or his listeners or his followers to pray for the president and pray for Congress? So that's what this is series is about. It's about challenging you to understand the power in praying for authority. And in order to get you to really do that, I want you to understand how God has established authority. And so uh, one of the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna define authority. Authority is the power or right to give orders, make decisions and enforce obedience. It is the power or the right to give orders, make decisions and enforce obedience. So God gives to human beings, and we're gonna find out not only human beings, the power or the ability to uh, give orders, to make decisions, and enforce obedience. That's what authority is. Now, all authority is delegated. Authority is delegated from one who has authority. This is important because you do not have authority if no one has given you authority. Someone has to give you authority, someone higher than you. So I can't go to my boss and decide because the other coworkers aren't doing what they're supposed to do that I'm going to assume the responsibility of taking charge of my coworkers and requiring them to respond to me in obedience and make decisions regarding their work. I can't do that just because 
I see something happening. In order for me to have authority, somebody with authority must delegate their authority to me. Now that's important because people confuse power and authority. And if you've listened to my videos, I've tried to explain to you that it's possible to have power and not have authority. But it's impossible to have authority and not have power. Listen to me again. It is possible to have, it is possible to have power but not have authority. So a bank robber can come in or a robber can come in here with a gun and force me to do all kinds of things against my will. He can force my obedience, but it doesn't mean that he has the right to force my obedience. He's taking uh, uh, the power, un, uh, they're using undelegated power against me to force my compliance with his will. So he has power, but he doesn't have the right to use that power. But then there is a police officer. He can likewise kick in my door, come in here and give me commands, and I am obligated to respond to his commands with obedience because he has been given authority. His authority gives him the right to use power against me to make decisions for me and to enforce my obedience. So there's a difference. I hear people say that you can have power and or authority. If you have authority, you have power. If you have authority, now you may not know how to use that power, you may not understand that you have the right to use that power, but if you have authority, then you have power. No such thing as an authority with power. And if you disagree, I dare you to go up to any single person who is a person of authority over you and challenge them and find out if they have power. Find out if your boss has the power to change your life with a decision to sign a piece of paper that sends you out the door. Find out if your uh, pastor has the, the authority to make some decisions that will have you sitting on, on the curb of the church not having access to resources, not having access to counseling. People with authority have power. So let's not make that uh, confuse that. That being said, it's important for us to understand that all authority comes from God. This is something that I'm discovering that the church does not like. There is a faction of people growing within the body who are resistant to the idea of authority. And I'm going to tell you something. You're going to get yourself into trouble and, a pro and a, you're probably experiencing trouble and you don't even know why. So let's read Romans 13. Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities for there is no authority except from God. And the authorities that exist are what? Appointed by God. Now, I want y'all to understand this because one of the things I try to help y'all do, you know, I don't encourage you just to read your Bible. I need you to see your Bible. You can read certain things and be just as off in your interpretation if you don't learn to see God in the scriptures, to see his pattern, to see his footsteps, to see his footprints. One of the things that you're never going to find is a place where Satan put somebody in charge. Nebuchadnezzar, as wicked as he was, was there clearly, clearly, God lets us know in Daniel, that Nebuchadnezzar is there with his wicked self because God put him there. King Darius is there of the Medes and Persians because God put him there. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar's son, Belteshazzar, got kicked off the throne because God kicked him off the throne. And the Bible says he turned his kingdom over to them. So it's very clear that God is not as stuck up as we are. And, and, and the reason this is important is because when we don't have 
the person that we want in office or the person we don't want for a boss or the person we don't want for a pastor. And I don't even understand the one with the pastor, because if you don't like your pastor, then leave and go find a pastor that you can follow. That one is very easy to do. You don't like him. You don't agree with him. Go somewhere else. That's simple. However, it's never going to benefit you to go against the authority. Now, I have a whole lot of, this is groundwork, and I'm going to lay a groundwork for a whole lot of stuff. And I want you to see this. So this means that President Obama did not show up in office by himself. Neither did the people who were there. And they weren't surprises to God. President Trump did not show up in office by himself. The Bible is very clear. All authority, speaking of the body or the concept of authority, is from God. And the authorities, speaking of the people who feel those concepts that exist, are what? They are appointed by God. So I want you all to start understanding that. Look at verse 2. It says, therefore, whoever resists authority, resists the ordinance of God, and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. Now, one of the things I want y'all to do, if you have been one of those people who have been the persecutors of the authorities in your nation, your region, your job, I want you to repent and ask God to forgive you and stop doing that. Because he didn't tell you to do that. He told you to pray for them. He didn't tell you to stir up a revolution against them. And, and I guarantee you this, some of you are going to find out that certain problems in your life are going to stop immediately because you've taken your repentive action. And you're going to find out, and one of the reasons this is going to happen is because God wants you to be able to connect your action with the penalty so that you can get yourself out of unnecessary trouble. Uh, this is also what it says, for he is a minister to you for good. But if you do evil, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain, for he is God's minister. Who? The authorities. Who? The ones appointed by God. He is God's minister and avenger to execute wrath on all those who practice evil. Therefore, you must be subject, not only because of wrath's sake, speaking of God and the, the, the ability of the authority to execute wrath, but also for conscience sake. For because of this, you also pay taxes, for they are God's ministers attending continually to this very thing. Render therefore all their due taxes, the taxes will do. So the bottom line is authority is not a, authority comes from God. If you have been given uh, power and authority is simply because God has given you a position of power and authority. And as I get deeper into this teaching, these are some of the things I'm going to look at, lest I lose those of you who don't want to talk about authority. I'm going to talk about um, uh, the different kinds of authority, natural and spiritual. I'm going to teach you that their uh, authorities are accountable, because one of the reasons y'all don't pray is because you think they're going to get away with things. I'm going to help you understand uh, what their role is. I'm going to help you understand things about God's order. I'm going to help you understand how the spiritual authority interacts with the natural authority to create the effects that we see in this world. I'm going to talk about how to pray for them. I'm going to talk about the fact that authorities are subject to influence, spiritual influence, which takes us back to the dream that I had where God was trying to show me the angel and the demon over the lawmakers. Uh, uh, I'm going to show you all kinds of stuff. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about secondary influences. Where does Satan operate in the authority uh, uh, issue? Because he's in there too. I'm going to show you about the strong man. I'm going to show you a lot of stuff, all of this stuff that the enemy tried to give me a face, or well, not tried to, gave me a face-to-face -face encounter to in, try to intimidate me to stop. 
Because when we really understand, when we really understand the power in praying for authority and understand authority, it'll be easier for us to pray for authority because we'll understand what's happening behind the veil. Because ultimately, this is about teaching y'all what happens when we pray. What happens when we pray and how does authority come into play in all of this? So welcome to Doing Life on Fire. In the next one, I'm going to pick up with, uh, uh, with uh, the different kinds of authority.